Hey church family, good to have you here again this week. We are on week four of our series, Get Out There and Action series. Uh, and so this week we're, we're here, we're here at a local park uh, where the folks are, the weather's great, and it's nice to be able to share with you uh, in your life group. One of the things that we'd like to do as we, we, we have um, some scripture we're gonna read, discussion questions just like we normally have, but I'm gonna ask you to change your prism, maybe your focus just a little bit um, what we really want to focus and concentrate on in these two passages of Scripture um, is how Jesus is communicating with people. And so we're going to ask you kind of right up front as, as we kind of go through the Scripture together, and you will have time in your, with your discussion questions and discussion time with your group, that you'll be able to unpack this as well. But we really want you to kind of get, get that first blush and how Jesus is communicating. Remember in Colossians, uh, Paul is talking about how we should have uh, make our conversation salty so that it is kind of good and pleasing and it causes people to come back. Um, and we want to be ready with an answer for, with every, for everybody. And so that, those are the things we kind of want to look at here today. Um, if you have your Bibles, we're going to go ahead and, and open up to the book of John here in just a second. Um, but go ahead and, and uh, feel free to take notes. And again, we want to focus um, on how Jesus is communicating with the two very, very different people that he's going to be talking with in these passages. So go ahead and turn to John chapter 3, and we're going to begin in verse 1. And I'll go ahead and read aloud and maybe set the stage a little bit, and then we'll move on to our second passage um, in John 4. Now this is, this is Nicodemus visiting Jesus at night. Beginning in verse 1, it says, Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man had come to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one can do these things, do these signs that you do, unless God is with him. And go ahead and stop right there. Let me just, he had, Nicodemus identifies himself as a Pharisee. Um, and uh, he is not just a Pharisee. I mean, this man is quote unquote religious all the way through. Uh, he is a member of the powerful Jewish ruling council. Uh, so he is well known. Um, but still, he, he, he kind of is intrigued by Christ, so he comes to him and asks, starts asking questions. And this is how Jesus responds. And go ahead and, and note how he starts to respond, and they banter about him and Nicodemus. Beginning in verse 3, Jesus answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born, can he? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of, have, a kingdom of God. Continuing in verse 6, it says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I said this to you. You must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but, but do not know where it comes from or where it is going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus replies, kind of in a confused way, and says, says to him, how can these things be? In verse 10, Jesus answered and said, uh, are, are you the teacher of Israel and do not understand these things? Truly, truly, and note, this is the third time Jesus goes to Nicodemus and says, truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and testify of what we've seen, and you do not accept our testimony. If I told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if, if I tell you heavenly things? No one is ascended into heaven, but he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. And so this, this interaction, and, and I know you probably have heard this story before, but Jesus has a particular way that he is communicating and bantering about with Nicodemus, uh, a particular kind of tone, if you will. So kind of keep that in mind. And what we're going to do is we're going to flip right over to the next chapter. We're going to go to John chapter 4. And th this is, and you probably have heard this story before as well, but this is Jesus talking to the woman at the well. And here, beginning in verse 1, and compare and contrast this with this woman uh, to how he does with, or how he did with Nicodemus. Beginning in verse 1, Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself was not baptizing, his disciples were, he left Judea and went away again to, to Galilee, and he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria called Sychar, 
near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there, so Jesus, being wearied from his journey, was sitting thus by the well, and it was about the sixth hour. And there came a woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. Now, so, a lot of you may already know this story, but um, let me just provide a little background. Um, going through Samaria was not a normal way that, that a Jew would do back then. Uh, if you recall, the Assyrians had defeated the, Israel, um, the northern kingdom and uh, carted away a lot of the captives to Assyria. And so there was a remnant of Jews left, and the Assyrians brought in a lot of people from foreign lands to populate the land, work the land, and kind of keep the peace. And the Jews that were remnants intermarried with them and created a group of kind of um, uh, uh, a, a, different, a different race called Samar Samaritans. And so this, for a Jewish man to intentionally travel there, they would not have done this. However, Jesus does this because he wants to have this encounter with the woman at the well. Continuing in verse 9, he says, Therefore the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask me for a drink since I'm a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. She replied, She says to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? You are not greater than our father Jacob, are you, who gave us the well and drank of it himself and his sons and his cattle? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water I will give him shall never thirst, but the water that I give him will become in him a, a well of water springing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so I will not be thirsty, nor come all the way here to draw. He said to her, Go call your husband and come here. So Jesus kind of flips the conversation on her. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus replies or said to her, you have correctly said I have no husband for you have five husbands and the one you have now, that you now have is not your husband. This you have said truly. And the woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. And the contrast is really stark, and, and that, is, that is why we kind of wanted, um, wanted you, as you begin your, your study time in your discussion questions, uh, to kind of notice the difference uh, of how Jesus communicates. Look, we're at a park here today, and this park has all sorts of folks, young and old, different races, and to communicate with different people at different times, Jesus was a master at being able to do this. He knew how to tailor his message to the particular person he was speaking with. Uh, now keep in mind, we want to be those kind of experts in communication as well. However, Christ always has the advantage over us because he's the Lord. He already knew what was going on with Nicodemus. He already knew what was happening with the woman at the well. We have the disadvantage, or we have the opportunity, I should say, to go and we have to learn. We have to become experts in the people around us, with our neighbors, with our coworkers, people at our church so that we can maybe communicate with them in a more effective way. So as we consider getting out and, and speaking on behalf of the Lord and making connections with, with people in our, in our midst uh, uh, that we have access to, um, the question we have is, d d are there people in your life that you need to go to school on? Are there people that you're, you, you wanted to reach and your communication just falling flat? Uh, maybe there's people you need to spend more time with that need to hear the gospel. Um, but you need to get to know them a little better so you know how to tailor your message. Or maybe there's people that you've already spoken to that you know that you need, it didn't go well the first time, that you need to reapproach and speak to again. Uh, as we go through our discussion, discussion time, uh, I would encourage you to look at your life and see where you need to make the change and how you can become an expert on the people around you like Christ was and then be able to adjust your communication accordingly. Anyway, thank you for your time. We appreciate you watching this video and enjoy your, your discussion time.